please put your hands together for Dick Kirtley, everyone. <laughs> Sort of a cliche for comedians, but how's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> this is to be a teaching moment because in my other life as a motivational speaker, what I teach people is that normally when somebody asks you how you're doing, they don't really give a shit. <laughs> okay? They don't want to hear, you know, the dog shit, the carpet, the relatives are moving in down in the basement. <laughs> That's particularly funny to my kids. Um, <laughs> They don't want to hear that, and nor do you want to have to think about it. You don't want to have to say, well, how is it going? So I have one thing I teach for all my motivational seminars, and the answer that you give when I say, or anybody says to you, how are you doing, you just look at them and say, unbelievable, and you keep on walking. Think about it. You could be unbelievably bad, you could be unbelievably good. It satisfies every, every time, and they always assume the positive. So, we're going to try this again, see how well you listen. How's everybody doing tonight? Unbelievable! Right. Uh, this is really um, a, a pleasure and a privilege for me to host tonight, because as Alana told you, I am the newest. Um, first of all, I do want to thank Alana and uh, Comedy on Purpose, which is her her uh, nomenclature, or whichever you call it, and uh, thank her and her husband Mark set this all up, so could you give her a round of applause for putting it <laughs> And also one more time for the management staff of SOHO. Please, 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 please tip, tip well. Okay. Uh, now, as I said, I, you are going to be entertained tonight by three really established funny people and me. Okay? And I get to go first. So, but it is an honor. I was going to say it's an honor to share the stage with them, and I looked around and said, I'm sharing the mic. <laughs> I forgot my stage. Uh, but anyway, for me, this is incredible. Starting in April, I mean, my background, quite frankly, is 20-year naval officer, 18 years with a local company, Sanders BA Systems, and then retired and motivational speaker on the side. Last April, I've always had stand up on my bucket list because I admire these people that do it all the time. And actually, it was the only thing on my bucket list, so I don't have a bucket list anymore. I have a bucket list the length of my arm, but, but not a bucket list. So anyway, for me, I, I'm brand new. Now you can imagine this. I say to Alana, I want to do stand-up. What do I do? She books me. Okay? And I'm I'm panicked. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what you know, what if I forget my lines? Do I write them down um, on, on notes on my hand or do I carry them? And then I, I literally said, fuck it, I'm gonna be blatant. I got myself a Tom Brady armband. <laughs> I figured if Brady can use this on national TV, I sure as shit can use it in Hudson, New Hampshire to do stand-up, right? <laughs> so my game plan is right here, but then I got to thinking about Tom Brady. Any Brady fans in here? Yeah. <laughs> I got to thinking about Tom Brady, and you know, the pressure on the field for him is unimaginable. But stop to think about the pressure on him in the bedroom with supermodel wife Giselle. I mean, you know, she wants the long ball every night, right? And if you watch Brady, you know he's much better at the repetitive short game. <laughs> so, Brady wears one of these in the bedroom to stay on plan, I'm sure. So you can see it now. His wife, Giselle, he says, hop up here, sweetie. Says, tonight I want you to uh, get down in a four-point stance. I'm going to fake it to your wide receiver and drill your tight end. Wait. <laughs> And of course, her response is, not this tight end, pretty boy. And she's thinking, prevent defense, prevent defense. But you know Brady, he quickly audibles, runs a quick quarterback sneak, gains about six inches of hard-earned turf. Giselle's on the disabled list for about a month. But then I got to thinking, you know, even Brady, I mean, you know, he's an ordinary guy in the bedroom. He cannot possibly get it up, keep it up every night. So he's got to be like most men. I'm sure there's some nights when he just has to close his eyes and pretend that she's 
Wes Welker. <laughs> and he's singing, please come back to Boston. He said it, no. And poor Giselle, all she's thinking is, I'd be satisfied if he'd just keep running Woodhead up the middle. <laughs> so there's one big difference between Brady and uh, me in the bedroom, and that is, I don't need one of these. Because my game plan is simple. Yep, I put the TV on remote, I'm on pause, I run my two minute drill, and it's game over, baby. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, my name really is Dick, go figure. I've been trying to live it down all my life. All I can figure is in the delivery room, my parents looked up, the doctor held me up, and they looked and said, yeah, Dick. And then my wife of 30 years over here, bless her heart, still introduces me. Still introduces me to this day, this is my Dick. And then, 20 years as a naval officer, you think I can live it down, right? No, nope. Army officers spend their career leading grunts and ground pounders, right? Marine Corps officers lead leathernecks, jarheads. With me, it was 20 years of, it's Commander Dick and his seaman. <laughs> and then I walk in a board of directors meeting on, from my condo association, and the whole board is sitting there, and they've got a bright yellow t-shirt, and on the back in big black letters it says, don't be a dick. I said, okay, that's very funny, but don't I get a shirt? And this is honestly the shirt they got me. So, yes, I am the dick. But the trouble is, lately I'm an old dick, and things are starting to fall apart. My, my bladder pump went years ago, and I'm on gravity feet just to go pee now. And that's really embarrassing in a men's room. Some of you guys know this. I'm in there just trying to drip dry, and all these, all these young studs are coming in on both sides of me, and they unzip, and they put both hands on the wall, and head back, and like a water cannon on the fire truck. They're blasting that stream off the wall, and they zip up, and then they look at me and sneer and walk out. And there I stand, like some old dairy farmer trying to wring the last drip out of the withered tea of an old milk cow. <laughs> like the old ketchup commercial, anticipation. <laughs> anyway, growing old sucks. There's nothing to this wonder year stuff. I mean, I've become my mother. I take so many pills now. I have to have one of those stupid little pill boxes. You see them. Divided seven days a week, a.m. and p.m. And the idea is you put all your pills in them on Sunday night and you take them all week, right? Well, that's great, except I never know what the fuck day it is. So, on Friday, there's half of them are empty, half of them are full. I don't know when I took the damn pills. I mean, I take pills for everything. I take them for cholesterol, acid reflux, my heart, restless leg syndrome, um, allergies. They just had to give me one now because I don't sleep at night. So they gave me an antidepressant. And, I, and I'm going to do a whole stand-up about the list of things they said could happen to me there. But the interesting one was, it said they could make you more depressed and you could hang yourself. <laughs> but anyway, I take every pill in the world except the little blue pill. Now, it's not because I don't need that pill. It's just, what the fuck am I going to do with a four-hour erection? <laughs> I mean... You know, my wife, again, bless her heart, she's done and cleaned up in 10 minutes and back playing games on her iPhone. <laughs> and besides, in any, any four hour period like that, I've got to get up and walk off my restless legs. I'm going to have to pee at least twice. I'm going to have to stop and breathe deeply to bring down a runaway heartbeat. And I'm going to fart the whole time and have to constantly check for anal leakage. <laughs> The worst part is, there I'd be for the next three hours and 50 minutes, pondering what to do with four inches of rigid, vein-popping, blood-gorged, did I say pulsating, hemorrhoids popping out of my head. Because that blood rushing to the middle of this whole body is going to take the path of least resistance and go right to the asshole. And after four hours, my butt's going to look like a miniature version of a Stonehenge. <laughs> and that blood's going to totally bypass my eight-inch semi-rigid old war horse. <laughs> and you know, just to keep that thing semi-rigid nowadays, I find that I have to close my eyes and pretend that I'm somebody else. <laughs> 
There is one advantage to a constant drip penis and anal leakage, and that is I always get my underwear on straight. Yellow in the front, brown in the back. Now one good thing though, I'll tell you, uh, I, and this is the positive about my growing old, I am still regular. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Every morning, six o'clock sharp, I empty my bladder. Seven o'clock on the dot, I move my bowels. Okay? The only problem is I'm not waking up bed until about nine. <laughs> Now, I mentioned my lovely wife over here, and I tend to think that I'm the comedy one the fail. I just got to share something with you. She's got just as sharp a mind. I'll give you two examples. She went, uh, I was going out last week, going somewhere, and I didn't know my fly was open. And I'm walking out, and she looks up and says, honey, your garage door's open. And I turned around being the sharp guy I am, and I said, did you see my Hummer parked in there? <laughs> she comes back with me. No, but I did see an old broken down VW Beetle with two flat tires. <laughs> and uh, another example, she went out shopping. I just won't go shopping with her. I break out in hives at the thought of going to a mall. But she went out shoe shopping and she came back and she was just bubbly. She not only found the shoes she wanted, but she said, Honey, it was so cool. This young salesman who was waiting on me said that I had the legs of a 17-year-old. And I said, Oh yeah, what do you say about your 60-year-old ass? <laughs> she, she looked back and said, Well, he didn't mention you at all, sweetie. <laughs> digress for a moment um, and just tell you, and this is just, just came up but i got to share it with you. I have a friend, first of all, who knows that I, I am a Christian and he, I don't know why, but after all these years he decided, I think he did just to bug me, he decided to become an atheist. So, and, and that, he has a right to do that, everybody has a right to their own belief, but he's also dyslexic. So he's going around saying, there is no dog. <laughs> Time to get dog out of our schools, you know. So hey, he's got a real problem, but that's not the funny part. The funny part is we're good friends with him. We were over there after having dinner and having after dinner drinks, and his uh, two great grandkids came out. They in uh, they were about four and three, and they said, uh, "Papa, can you read us a bedtime story?" And I forgot about it, dyslexic. So see, he says, "Sure." And he sits down and he opens up the book, and there on each side of him, and he says. You know, this is a great story. This is the loose that gave the olden gags. And my wife and I looked at each other and said, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> so, anyway, the story those children heard went something like this. Back in the not too past the disc, they carried my board, nor it's another five, to Pazusa a guess, which laid an olden gag every dig away of the seat. This they considered a great load of struck, but like some other people we put, they decided they weren't getting fits rest enough and wanted to set at the gorse of all this luscious prevalent. So they knocked the loose for a goo with a last act on the knob of the togging gore little goose. And just hopped the lab at the end guys of the Seuss were just like the end guys of any other Seuss. And besides, they no longer date the joy of the egg which the Genley Proust had never lailed to fame. The story of this more is, remember, as Shake said, Spear in the Virgin of Menace, all the golders is not blip. And he closes the book. My wife and I had all we could do to keep from falling off the couch. But the best thing was the look on these two kids' faces. If ever a four to three year old had the right to say, what the fuck was that? <laughs> it was then. Uh, I'm going to do something real quick and then I'm going to close and bring up the other guys, but I used to, it's not fair to say I never did stand-up comedy, I used to do for my family just an old man act, and whenever they, somebody was getting old, I'd dress up as an old man and come out and do these old man jokes and stuff. I quit it because one of my kids said, Dad, you should be doing that now because you don't need any makeup. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is bring back for just about two minutes my old friend, retired Admiral, uh, Isaiah Shelbat. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's a uh, pleasure for me to be here this evening. <laughs> My age, it's a pleasure to be anywhere this evening. <laughs> I want to thank, uh, thank uh, Commander Dick uh, and his seaman. <laughs> I always laugh when they call him that. Uh, 
I just wanted to say a few words uh, about living down to home. Uh, first of all, it is true at my age that I still take Viagra. I take a half a pill a day, not so much for the sex, but uh, keeps me from pissing on my slippers. <laughs> I, um, I, uh, been wooing this lady down to home, and I finally got her in the room last week, and she was undressing, and she took off her blouse, and she said, I just think I should tell you before we go any further, uh, that I, I have a cute in China. <laughs> and I said, I hope so, because them's the ugliest tits I've ever seen. <laughs> Three days later, I uh, was going to, to drip dry, and I noticed my penis had a little bit of a drip, a discharge. And so I went down to the clinic, and the doctor told me to drop my pants, and he looked at it, and he said, uh, hmm, pull your pants up. I want you to hurry back to your room and get that lady back into bed, because I think you're about to come. <laughs> except to say that he's Irish, and he's going to take it from there. So give a big hand for Mike Holmes, please.